Praise the Lord once again. Hallelujah. This morning I would like to start off my sermon with a funny story. I heard this from uh, one of my friends. Uh, this story is about a preacher. A preacher with a rare talent. And the rare talent was that through his preaching he was able to put the entire congregation to sleep. And it made me think and find out the reasons how preachers can have rare talent to put the congregation to sleep. And I found two reasons. One way a preacher can put his congregation to sleep is by using sweet, gentle, uh, kind words. The other way I found is that if the preacher is boring, if the preaching is boring, if the preaching is too lengthy, you can have the entire congregation put to sleep. And one fine Sunday, the preacher was addressing the congregation. And he was so annoyed to notice that one of the believers in the front pew, after a few warnings, he fell asleep. And he felt very embarrassed trying to find out how come this happened like this. It ha it's natural that people sitting in the back rows, back pews might fall to sleep. But how come believers sitting in the front pew can fall into sleep? And so he asked one of the uh, persons sitting next to the person who fell asleep. And that happens to be the son of the person who fell asleep. And so he asked, My dear child, why can't you wake your father? He said, Preacher, you put him to sleep, you better, it's your duty to raise him up. Huh? So I don't want to be a lengthy preacher and I don't want to, uh, to fall asleep. I want you to be awake. Alright, as we are heading towards Passion Week, I feel it is time for us to turn our attention, our thoughts to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ offered Himself on the cross of Calvary. Let us for a moment turn our attention to the cross where the Son of God hanged Himself. In fact, when he was on the face of this earth, he asked the disciples to remember the sacrifice that he offered on the cross of Calvary. We find that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 36. He said, do this in remembrance of me. The Lord Jesus Christ very well, he knew, knew that the, the disciples were... Uh, people who had short memory. We have the tendency to forget things. Jesus noticed that he asked them to keep on remembering the precious sacrifice that he had made on the cross of Calvary. Jesus died for you and me. He died for every man and woman. He died for every boy and every girl. He died for everyone who has ever lived. He has died for everyone who is living. He died for everyone who is going to leave. His death is universal. His death is incomparable. His death is unconditional. Nobody has ever died the kind of death our Lord Jesus Christ died on our behalf. It demonstrates how much He loves us. It demonstrates how much God loves the people of this earth. This morning the passage that has been picked and read already. I would like to draw your attention to one particular phrase, one particular word. You, if you have closely looked at the text that we have read this morning, you find the word suffering. You find the word sorrowful. Uh, verse, number, verse number 37. He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And you, uh, you, if you scroll down, verse 38, you see that, And he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. 
the word sorrowful occurring here repeatedly that goes to show that Jesus is in deep pain he is in anguish he sees very clearly that he is going to hang himself on the cross of Calvary for the sinners of this world the sorrow begins right from the time where he went to the garden of Gethsemane he took along with him disciples he wanted to pray and express his concern to the Lord he knew for sure he is going to die on the cross of Calvary it is going to be horrible experience it is going to be horrifying experience Jesus was deeply distressed he was sorrowful my friends he was in pain he was in agony he was exceedingly sorrowful what kind of agony what kind of sorrow that Jesus had to undergo as he was praying to the Lord as as he was praying to the Lord what kind of pain did he experience this morning I would like to draw your attention to the pain of the cross the pain of the cross let us delve into the pain of the cross what kind of pain that our Lord Jesus Christ had to endure on the cross of Calvary it is so easy to say Jesus died for me Jesus died for all of us Jesus died for the whole world let's spend some moment few minutes to delve into the pain of the cross there are four aspects of the pain of Jesus Christ on the cross four areas where Jesus suffered greatly exceedingly which made him sorrowful my friends the very reading of this passage will help you understand even as he is drawing closer to the cross the pain of Jesus Christ is intensified he feels that it is unbearable for him. He feels that it is unimaginable for him. What kind of pain that our son Jesus, our Lord Jesus suffered and endured on the cross of Calvary. The first aspect of pain of the cross is the physical pain and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ endured enormous physical pain and death. You go to the gospel, four gospels, you have a complete, comprehensive description of the pain of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he went to the cross, you can see the crescendo of his suffering. Gradually he was heading, as he was heading towards the cross, the kind of torture, the kind of agony, the kind of pain that our Lord Jesus Christ is going through is found mentioned in the four Gospels and to say it in very simply if you turn to Mark chapter 15 verses 24 to 25 you find that there they crucified him if you have to sum up the entire description surrounding the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ it would be these three words there they crucified him there they crucified him crucifixion was horrible crucifixion was painful it was one of the dreaded way of dying on the face of this earth some of the scholars have tried to associate the pain of the cross with many pains that you and I not naturally typically endure they compare it with kidney stone the pain that that uh, incurred by a person who suffers kidney stone it makes him roll around they have compared it with biting your tongue biting the tongue they have compared the suffering of the cross with certain kind of surgeries that cause tremendous pain in the body and soul but at the end of it they show there is nothing no pain on the face of the earth that could be compared to the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ so they said if you take the worst pain you have experienced and multiply it 10,000 times 
you might not still come close to the experience of the pain of our Lord Jesus Christ. Consider the worst kind of pain that you have ever experienced in your life and multiply that to 10,000 times. Still, you will never co come close to the suffering of our Savior, my friend, this morning. Crucifixion was a common form of punishment, execution for the criminals in the ancient world. Which our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, had to endure. It was a shameful death. It was a humiliating death. It was an inhuman death. Anybody could ever imagine. Isaiah, the prophet of God, he could envision the suffering of Christ. Many, many centuries before it actually happened, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 to 5, if you take a look at that, you'll find Isaiah looking at the future, Jesus suffering, and the suffering that he had to endure for you and me. He says, it is simply unimaginable. It is simply beyond our understanding. It is simply, you cannot digest that kind of suffering our Lord Jesus Christ went through. Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 14, he says, Many were amazed, they were appalled when they saw him. Beaten, bloodied, so disfigured, one could scarcely recognize him, my friend. He lost all his beauty. He lost all his beauty. He was completely disfigured. There is no way that anybody could recognize him as the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as he prayed in the Gethsemane, in the Garden of Gethsemane, his body had already begun to exhaust his still. And there will burst under his skin and he sweat drops of blood to the ground. Tremendous physical pain suffered by our Lord Jesus Christ. Before going to the cross, before he was nailed to the cross, the gospel writer says that he had been arrested, he had been tried, he had been convicted. He was beaten by the temple guards, Mark says. Then he had been taken to Pilate, where he was abused by the, the Pilate soldiers. He was scourged. He was scourged. The flesh came out of his body. He was beaten. He was spit upon. His beard was pulled out. He was crowned with thorns. He was sentenced to death. He carried with that tremendous pain, he had to carry the cross on his shoulder, my friends. And that was not the end of it. Even while he was hanging on the cross, his both ha hands were nailed, the feet were nailed. Still there, the suffering did not end. Look at the language the Bible uses. It says, he was mocked while he was hanging on the cross. People mocked him. They played pranks with him. They made fun of him. They railed him. They blasphemed him. They said evil things about him. They waved their head and said, Well, you are the savior of the world, right? Why can't you save yourself? You are the one who raised Lazarus from dead. Why can't you save yourself now? Save yourself. On the top of the physical suffering, we notice here, there was tremendous ridicule directed towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Even before going to the cross, his prayer, he began to feel the pain. As he went to the cross, so much of, so much of physical torture that he had to go through. While hanging on the cross, he still had to face the suffering. My dear friends, he did not deserve this kind of death, gruesome death. He did not deserve this kind of heinous death. He did not deserve this kind of cruel death that he did. He did have to die. He in fact made no wrong. There was no sin found in him. No fault was found with him, Bible says. But he was willing to endure 
such tremendous suffering for us, my friend. There, there is only one answer to the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one answer. And the answer is that He loves you and me. He loves every single individual on the face of this earth, my friend. It is the love of Christ. It is the love of God that caused him to go through such tremendous physical pain and death. There are so many groups of Christians that deny the fact that Jesus actually endured tremendous physical suffering. They don't believe that. But Bible is crystal clear. If you are a Bible believing Christian, then this is what Bible says. Bible says, our Lord Jesus endured enormous suffering, torture, torment on the cross of Calvary. And He suffered not because of His own mistake. He suffered to demonstrate His love for you and me. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, it says, God demonstrated His own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. This is the pure demonstration of God's love for you and me, my friends. If you are sitting here this morning, not knowing whether God loves you or not, this is the message I want to give you this morning. That Jesus loves you. That God loves you because He died for you. The question is, do you want to love Him in return? Do you want to suffer for Him in return? The choice is yours. He loves you. He loves you and me. First John chapter 3 verse 16 says, We know love. If, if we are to know the definition of love, you go to the cross. Go to the cross, you will know the definition of love. Because He laid down His life for us, friends. The cross is the pure demonstration of His love. Christ's suffering is a pure demonstration of His love. He loves us. Through His crucifixion, we understand how much God loves us. This crucifixion was a slow, agonizing death. Hard. Hard to die quickly. It's a slow death that our Jesus died. Any kind of, any kind of pain that you can imagine that our Lord Jesus Christ suffered. And that is not the end of it. It is the physical suffering that Jesus was about to face which made him extremely sorrowful, my friend. The second aspect of suffering is the suffering of bearing sins of the whole world. The pain of bearing the whole, the bearing the sins of the whole world. It is more awful, it is more terrible than the physical suffering our Jesus endured. Because he had to carry the sins of the whole world. Since the beginning of the time, since the creation of the human being, since the fall, people have been sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. Piling up sin. And Jesus is the only solution to the sin problem, my friends. He could see that it would be so horrible to bear the sins of the world. The guilt of our sins any average person will experience this. Any average person will experience the, the pain of bearing sin. Whenever we sin against God, we understand that the weight of sin becomes so heavy in our lives, so bitter that we feel that we are separated from God. In no way we can go close to God. We understand that there is something wrong in our lives. The moment we sin, whether or not you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you feel guilty about it. And if you are a child of God, trying to grow in holiness, then it will be all the more, the pain will be all the more. Because the more you grow in the holiness, the more you will begin to hate sin in your life. And if you don't, don't hate sin in your life, then there is a big question mark on your relationship with Christ. Whether you have established your relationship with Christ or not. Whether you are continuing in your relationship with Christ or not. But as far as Jesus is concerned, in so far as Jesus is concerned, Jesus is perfectly holy. 
He hated sin with his entire being. He cannot think of sin in his life. He cannot think of evil in his life. Sin is contrary to his nature. Having said that, he was willing to die on the cross of Calvary to bear our sins. To bear our, the sins of the world. The pain of hell was suffered, experienced by our Lord Jesus Christ. When he said, I thirst, one of the seven sayings is, I thirst. It reminds me of the experience of the rich man in the hell. He said, he was craving for a drop of water. Jesus on the cross, he was craving for a drop of water. He said, I thirst. Signifying the pain of the hell was experienced by our Lord Jesus Christ for you and me. He literally took our place on the cross. He died our death. He suffered our hell. He paid our price. You and I were to die for our sins. For the wages of sin is death. But Jesus took upon himself the death that was come that was to come upon us he suffered the pain of hell my friend on the cross of calvary for you and me the pain of hell that we were supposed to go through he went through so that you and i might find life in him he paid the price the price which we had to pay he became the ransom he paid the ransom that we ought, we had to pay Consider some of the verses in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 and 9 says, All we were like sheep had gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord laid on Jesus Christ the iniquity of us all. All our sins were transferred to the Lord Jesus Christ while he was on the cross of Calvary. To free us from the condemnation of sin. To free us from the penalty of sin. Our sins were transferred to Him. Our sins were imputed to Him. Our guilt was poured on Him. Verse 12 says, He bare the sin. He bore the sins of many. He bore the sins of many. He bore our transgressions. He took away our sins. Bearing the sins of the people. Person who knew no sin. Sin is contrary to his nature. He is completely righteous. He is completely holy. He is found no sin. He was found with no sin in him. Bible is very clear on that. John chapter 1 verse 29 says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. You want to be freed from the sin problem in your life? Look to the cross, my friend. Because Jesus has taken away your sins. He has taken away your sins and my sins. Having done no wrong to save us, to redeem us. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, For He had made Him to be sin for us. He became sinful for us. The pain of bearing sins of the whole world. First Peter chapter 2 24 says, Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And by whose stripes we are healed. Jesus, the suffering of Jesus on the cross, the suffering of bearing sins of the whole world. Can you imagine how how much the pain would be? One mistake that you make, sometimes you have to pay a heavy price. Imagine the sins of the whole world has been poured on our Lord Jesus Christ. Not easy. It made him sorrowful, my friend. It made him exceedingly sorrowful at human level. At human level. It was we who deserve to suffer this death. It is you, it is me who deserve to die for our sins, for our guilt. But he did not want that. He did not want us to have 
experienced that kind of death. In his great love, he suffered on suffered the pain on the cross. He paid at the uh, paid the penalty for our sins, so that we might be free, my friends. We might be free. You want to get rid of sin problem in your life? There is only one medicine, my friend. If you want to be cured from your sin problem, there is only one medicine. Go to the cross. Believe in Jesus. Your sin problem will be solved. My sin problem will be solved. It does not matter what kind of sin you have been entangled with. What kind of sin you have been living with. The blood of Christ is sufficient. Because the guilt, the sin has been transferred to our Lord Jesus Christ. Who knew no sin? He was willing to become a perfect sacrifice for us. The third, third pain our Lord Jesus Christ endured on the cross. The pain of separation. The pain of separation. The definition of death is separation. Wages of sin is death. Separation. Jesus had to separate from the father. Can you imagine a child is separated from his father? If you are a child, can you imagine yourself being away from your parents? Jesus suffered the pain of abandonment. Jesus was when Jesus was crucified, he suffered the pain of separation, abandonment, like no other, like no other. He was abandoned by people who professed that they would lay down their lives for him. Lord, we want to lay down your lives for you. We love you. We are ready to die for you. Time came, they all disappeared. They abandoned him. One of the twelve disciples sold him for thirty pieces of silver. Someone who was uh, who received training under Jesus Christ, someone who was always with Jesus Christ, someone who had enough of teaching from Jesus Christ, abandoned him, sold him. Crowds were thronging him, wanting to see the miracles performed by Jesus. Time came. They deserted him. They abandoned him. It was not just the human abandonment, my friends. There was more to it. It was worse than that. Because Father, the one who enjoyed relations with the Son for eternity, had to ab abandon him. This suffering of separation is much more than the suffering that the separation that he experienced by his own people. He came to his own and his own received him, not Bible says. Jesus on the cross, Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 says, Eli Eli Lama Sabakthani translated, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? There was a time Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 30, he says, I and my father are one. We have a tremendous fellowship together. I am the reflection of the Father, he said. When he was on the cross of Calvary, he felt abandoned, my friend. He said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Eli Eli Lama Sabakthani. Someone who shared his friendship with, for eternity. Someone who had oneness, shared oneness with him. Today, on the cross... He feels abandoned. He feels deserted. He is no more one with the Father. He is no more friend with the Father. He carried the guilt of millions of sins. Millions of sins of yours and mine. Millions of sins of yours and mine. He had to be forsaken. He had to endure the pain of separation. His own people deserted him. Even his father deserted him on the cross. All these things he did for us. He was abandoned. He was abandoned. He was deserted. He was left alone on the cross of Calvary. Someone with whom he shared his closest relationship. Someone with him who shared the best 
of friends, they were together, fellowshipping together, that fellowship has been cut off on the cross of Calvary. Christ endured the pain of separation, abandonment. The fourth aspect of pain is the pain of bearing the wrath of God. The pain of bearing the wrath of God. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10 and 11 shows that the death of Jesus Christ appeased God. The death of Jesus Christ satisfied God. The blood of the goat, blood of the lamb did not satisfy God. Did not appease God. It was only the death of the son that satisfied God. Bible says. We are all children of disobedience under the wrath of God. Let me give you some of the uh, verses for your future reference. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 said, The wrath of God has been revealed against ungodliness. Wrath of God has been revealed against ungodliness. And um, verse, uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 9 says, We shall be saved from the wrath of God. We shall be saved from the wrath of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 says, The wrath of God was upon us. We as children of disobedience, the wrath of, we were under the wrath of God. The fierce anger of God because of sin. Everybody is a sinner according to the Bible. We are born sinners and we are under the wrath of God. The only way we can be saved from the wrath of God is either you suffer yourself or somebody has to substitute for you. Somebody has to substitute. And God found only His Son to be the right substitute for you and for me. The wrath of God was poured out on the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot even stand before God. We cannot even stand before God for a small sin. But here is the Son of God who is standing before God, facing the God, fa facing God and His wrath for the sins of the whole world. I leave that for your imagination. Thank God, the death of Jesus satisfied the wrath of God. It was acceptable before God and the wrath of God is appeased. God is appeased. He is happy with the sacrifice. That was made on the cross of Calvary. Now God can look at us as people whose wrath has been already removed by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus suffered the pain of bearing the wrath of God. Today, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are no more under the wrath of God. The wrath of God has been removed from you. You have become the friend of God. But if you are yet to be saved, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, then this is the time for you to get rid of the wrath of God from you, my friend. Christ has already taken your wrath. How sad it will be when you die without Christ and go to Christless eternity. When Christ has done everything for you, it is time that we accepted. It is time that we accepted Him. It is time that you believe in Him. Jesus suffered on the cross of Calvary. Bearing the wrath of God. Bearing the wrath of God. Bearing the wrath of that was to come upon the whole world. Jesus, while praying at the Garden of Gethsemane, He was exceedingly sorrowful. Exceedingly distressed. Knowing that He has to endure tremendous, enormous physical suffering and death. Not for Himself but for you and me. And it is a demonstration of His love for us. Do you recognize that love for you, my friend, this morning? He bore the sins of the world. Have you trusted Him? Because He has bore your sins on the cross. He bore 
He suffered the pain of separation from the father. He was abandoned by the father for you and me. What a sacrifice. What a commitment. Finally, he suffered the pain of enduring the wrath of God. The wrath that was to come upon us was taken, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Our sin was imputed in Him. Our wrath was imputed in Him. This morning, I want to tell you that Christ died for everyone here. Those of you who have already accepted Him, and those of you who have not, how sad it will be when people die and go to a hellfire with stubborn heart, not knowing Jesus as the Savior. How sad it will be for us, we those who have known Him, we those who have trusted in Him, forgetting the price that He paid for us, so that we might walk in newness of life, we might walk in the ways of righteousness, how often we have failed to walk in the ways of righteousness, God expects us that we repent from our daily sins. We repent from our sins and walk a life that is acceptable before Him. The life of righteousness, a life of holiness. He paid the price for us, my friend. Shall you close our eyes? Shall you close our eyes? Every head bow, every eyes close. Let's spend 30 seconds thanking the Son Jesus for what He has done for us. Lord, I thank You that You endure suffering, the physical suffering, physical torture, torment, and even death for my sake. I thank You, Lord, that You bore my sins and You have freed me. I thank You, Lord, that you were abandoned so that I will be accepted by God. Thank you, Lord, that you took away my wrath that was to come upon me so that I will be righteous before God. I thank you. And help me, Lord, that I would value the price that you paid on the cross of Calvary. By the way I live my Christian life, the way I compromise with sin in my daily life, forgive me, O Lord. Help me not to devalue the price you paid. If you are a person, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord, would you accept Him? Say, Lord, come into my heart. I thank you for the love you have shown to me by dying on the cross of Calvary. Come to my heart. Make me your child. I want to follow you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the tremendous love for us, O oh Lord, which forced you to die on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for taking all our pain, sorrow, agony that we are supposed to go through, you went through. We thank you for removing sin from our lives. Thank you that we are no more under condemnation, with no more under the wrath of God. We thank you for the righteousness that has been imputed on us. Lord God, I pray this morning for dear brothers and sisters, I pray that you would help us to walk in newness of life, the way of righteousness, way of holiness, valuing the price you paid for us, O Lord. I pray for those who are yet to receive you, O Lord. Speak to their hearts. May they accept you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. We pray that the rest of the week will go well with us. We pray that even as we walk out, these thoughts will continue to ring in our ears and help us to live a life that will honor you and glorify you. We ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.